welcome our webinar like about API security. I'm honored to serve as the moderator for today's session. Um, actually, I would like to express my gratitude to U Unique Sec and Secure Debug uh, for this event. Uh, also, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Ofer Hakimi from Pint. Uh, as our guest speaker for today's discussion, Mr. Hakim is an expert in the field of API security and has wealth of knowledge and experience, and he will be sharing with us today. Uh, the goal of this webinar is like in, to explain the importance of API security and to provide attendees the understanding of the risk and the best practice in securing APIs. Uh, we hope by the end of this webinar, you will have the better understanding of API security and the steps you can take to protect your APIs from potential threats. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you to Pint and Secure Debug for this co-hosting this event. And uh, thank you to Mr. Ofer Hakimi. Uh, let's get started. So, Ofer, uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your company, Pint? Of course, of course. Thank you, Guzan. Thank you all for having me here and in this very interesting webinar. I hope you all will enjoy. Uh, again, thank you uh, for Security Bug, for uh, UnixSec, uh, for arranging this uh, webinar. Um, so about myself, I'm offer, I started my career as a software engineer, team leader, then close to the product side, I was at several companies like Celebrite, Harman International, JFrog, uh, mainly in the cyber security uh, domain. Uh, today I'm the CTO of Pine. Pine is a young uh, startup, cyber security startup based in Israel, uh, already successful with a free community version with a lot of uh, users. Uh, from all over the world that actually using uh, Pine and find API security vulnerabilities. And I will tell you a lot uh, later. Um, so maybe uh, before we start, we are going to start, I wish to put you in the question and answer section, a uh, short uh, poll. So feel free, you know, uh, it took about two minutes, you know, to fill it. Um, I'm just, you know, putting it in the uh, question and answer section. Just a second. Um, can you see it? Okay, so in the meantime, you can use it and I will start uh, presenting uh, uh, my screen. So just a sec. Okay. So, do you able to see my screen? Yeah, yeah. you can see me. Great, yeah. thank you. Thank you. So, the subject of today is API security, and we offer a different approach, do it right, but start from left. So, uh, the agenda for today will be how API security became one of the biggest, basically, security challenges in 2023. Uh, we will cover the market trends for API security, um, I will share with you the reasons, the main reasons why you should consider shift left for API security. Uh, also, um, I will cover the subject why we can use the traditional tools in order to solve the current API security problems. We will move to a short survey to see the uh, approach for the current organizations for API security. Um, I will cover, um, uh, in short, the OASP.10 uh, categories for API security that exist today. Um, we will um, discuss why developers and security tools just don't click today. Uh, and then we will move to Pint. What is Pint? How uh, Pint helps basically to solve the API security gaps. We'll move to demo and then leave time to uh, questions and answers. Uh, so let's start from the API security. So we know it's a very hot topic today. Uh, APIs, as you know, are basically everywhere. It's not just the public APIs. Also, organizations uh, use APIs as, as part of APIs first approach. It's like everything connected via APIs, microservices, the software is built today 
uh, and connects today via APIs. But as we know, APIs are basically doors. The APIs are doors to all the organizational assets that we have today. And basically, when you have doors in security, you have also problems. So we see already a lot, a lot of issues with uh, API security. We see companies like that you, we all know, like Twitter, like uh, Facebook, like T-Mobile recently that was affected from API security breach. And those are only the big companies that you we, you hear in the news, but there are a lot of other companies that are affected from API security issues. That's put actually Gartner to put API security as a top concern. And Fortner even said API security is the most uh, um, big, the, the, big, the biggest problem for uh, security in 2023, along uh, with uh, zero trust. So we have the API security issue everywhere and organizations struggle to fight this um, tremendous issue. And um, maybe let's try to understand why, why it's happening, uh, why it's so severe problem. So we know that APIs are exploding, but how much they are exploding? According to Akamai report, 83% of the internet traffic today is driven by API services. It's like you know, you saw you saw websites, everything behind it, it's API. So APIs are basically everywhere and leads to a lot of issues. Uh, regarding the development, so more than 20 million API developers are actually dealing with APIs. So it's a, a very crucial part today in the API development. Um, and the other side of it, they don't really test their API for security. We know that developers mainly, you know, test the API for the functional side but not for the security side. So basically we leave the, the work to the security people, but the problem is there are almost no security people. There is a huge shortage in cybersecurity talent. We know that there are like 3.5 million hundred jobs uh, according to New York Times. So developers are creating a lot of issues around the APIs and there are no security people to actually uh, cover for those uh, issues. So creating a big gap um, and the few security owners that exist in the organization they don't have the real visibility and control over APIs they don't know even which are the APIs developed so many APIs are being developed uh, and passing uh, by the security people and uh, it's creating a huge problem and today if API security is handled it's basically handled only in production so once you have the API in production, there are uh, tools that actually try to capture all the traffic and identify attacks, but it's done after the fact. You know, the, the vulnerability is already outside and the tools are trying to capture attacks um, in, run, in run time, basically. So that's the picture we have today, how, how we can proceed from this point. So Gartner tried to map the API security landscape and divide it to two. One is the API threat protection field, which is the domain that I already talked about, it's defending your API from attacks. Basically, your APIs are already deployed to production, and now we are trying you know, to detect patterns of attacks and highlight to the CISO, here there is a uh, possible attack, let's handle it. So this is done basically after the fact. There are a few challenges with each approach because uh, it's by nature, um, this kind of technologies that trying to capture attacks are, are very prone to false positive. It can create a lot of uh, uh, misalarms for the CISO. Um, the other thing of it that experienced security personnel is actually required to deal with this kind of approach because it's not like a solution for developers. It's like somebody that will capture the problems after production and will be expert for security. Uh, and the other side of it, in order to do it efficiently and, and, and you know, and not harm the business continuity, you need to implement it uh, correctly uh, in the way that it will capture the attack, but in the other side will not harm the business that should run, you know, as regular. Uh, so this is the API threat protection side and Gartner defined another market in the API security field which is the shift left market. This is the API security testing. And this uh, um, uh, kind of companies are 
more focused on identifying vulnerabilities before they are happening in production. We need to start capturing the problems early in the, in the SDLC uh, to prevent them to go to production. But, you know, it's also a very challenging um, perspective because, you know, giving the, the, the development or the DevOps uh, the control of security is like very challenging. It's easier said than done to acquire the right solution for R&D adoption and the entire cost collaboration in the company. It's not only work for the security, but for the entire R&D organization. So it's very challenging and the solution should fit the right persona in this uh, um, trend. The other thing is to, in order to identify uh, API security testing related issues, and I will tell you more about which issues uh, we have in uh, we have in API security. Uh, traditional tools cannot really solve the unique challenges uh, of API security. So, in summary, we see uh, two two different approaches for API security. Uh, the the trending one is the API security testing, which is basically Gartner put it in 2022 already in the the top of the hype cycle. You see uh, the API security testing is basically uh, one of the most hot topics in application security in general. So this is uh, to cover um, the API security length, landscape today. Um, so wh why do we really need the shift left trend for API security? And, and in general, why, why it's so important to do the security uh, from the beginning? So. All the things here are, are basically obvious. It's faster delivery to production. You know, there is the agile trend. We want to deliver fast to production, the complete software, not only, you know, the basic software that the developer develops, but also a, a quality software that was already tested as part of the DevOps processes. And why not also uh, put security as part of this faster delivery to have everything completed fast and ready to production? Uh, so this is, you know, uh, obvious. Uh, it's also the rule of ten that we have for quality works also here. Basically, security is, is a quality issue, yeah? So we want to avoid uh, cases that bug is found very uh, far in the development process, maybe even after production in the security case. So we know that solving a bug or even debugging it costs us a lot. Think about the developer that develops a feature, and then after half a year, it gets a security issue in the feature that you already forgotten and need now to handle it. So basically, it's not an efficient process, you know, to uh, solve things only at the end. We want to solve the issues earlier as possible. And the other thing is to remove friction. You know, as a developer, I don't want silos in the process. I want to be able to control everything. I don't want the security guy to beg me one month after I develop something. So uh, we want some process in our, uh, that is um, um, basically seamless in the development process uh, and also include security without interfering uh, the developer. Um, and also responsibility, we, we, you know, as a developer, when I develop code, I want the code to be, you know, uh, well, this is possible. I don't want someone else to fix my code. You know, it's my responsibility to provide a, a better code, a better with a better quality and with a better security. So it's obvious that we want to embed responsibility earlier as possible. And, and the last thing in the in the company eyes is to improve the security posture. We know today companies are running after the compliance, but the compliance is not like you know having. The, the perfect security is like having the perfect uh, product to uh, pass the compliance, but we want basically an improved security posture, not only be concerned about the compliance, but the actual security of the product. So it's not the same. Uh, so those are the benefits of shiftless security testing. So um, if this is the requirement for security to be handled from the beginning and we have the challenges of API security. Why? What is the, the main sh challenge today? What are the, the requirements for security to, to meet those challenges? And why uh, the security tools that exist today does not deal with, with such challenges? So we have SaaS tools, and we know that there, there are SaaS tools to, to, uh, to explain you. SaaS is like scanning your code to find first 
third-party vulnerabilities to find vulnerabilities that I am as a developer integrated to the code. So it's like a code scan that I'm doing. And there are tools that aim for developers in the SAS field that, you know, developers after developing code, they are scanning uh, their code for uh, security issues. So why not fit the, the API security? The main issue with API security is that the API security is like understanding the business context behind your application. And static scan code cannot actually address this challenge of understanding the context behind the, the application. And this is required in the API security field. Um, YAS tools are, are like, you know, to embed uh, security measures inside the code. It's very complex to integrate such tools. So it's not like the developer, uh, the, the typical developer will use YAS tools in order to solve security. It's very uh, complicated and not uh, focused specifically on API security. And there is the traditional DAS tools, which are active tools that actually trying to, you know, penetrate the system and trying to find vulnerabilities. The issue with traditional DAS tools, they are uh, using fast techniques. They are not uh, actually focused on API security and does not understand the business context. And that uh, causes a lot of issues with you know, performance, they're very uh, time consuming. They, they require the, the, the actual uh, uh, user to uh, configure, to do a lot of configuration. So traditional DAS tools are not uh, fitting this specific uh, issue. And there are companies that using Burp and Zap, we know Burp and Zap are very uh, efficient and effective security tools, but they are also not focused on the API security problem. They are more generic. They end more to the security personas, not to the developer. The developer is not a security expert. We need to remember that. So this is like the current state and why the actual tools that exist today do not solve the API security issue. So let's do a little break maybe and uh, go to a survey that we did recently. This is the server I, uh, survey I sent you. So let's do a little break and move to the survey. So we, if we are going to the to the survey, we uh, see a trend. So um, if I'm looking here, you see my screen? Okay. Okay, great. Um, so we see a lot of developers, a lot of quality engineers that uh, answer this uh, server, not necessarily security uh, people. Uh, and we see that there are a lot of people from, you know, um, a lot of uh, organization sizes. We have small organizations versus very big organizations. Uh, but regarding API, we see that many organizations use today, API. almost all organizations involve some, somehow APIs as part of the development process. So it's become, you know, a mainstream. So it emphasizes the API security issue. Um, and regarding functional tests, do we test uh, our APIs uh, that they are actually working? So most of the companies we see test their APIs for the functional, uh, their functional behavior. And how they test their APIs? They're using some tools that exist today. The most frequent and popular tool is Postman. Uh, do you know Postman? Write me in the chat if you're using uh, Postman as part of your day-to-day -day job. So Postman is very popular. And also for the CI CD, there are other popular tools like PyTest. PyTest is the Python uh, uh, script that you can also write an API test via the, uh, the Python. And Rest Assured uh, Framework is also po very popular in, uh, in order to test your API for functionality. Um, so those are the most popular uh, tools today. Um, but regarding API security, not the functional test of the API, but the security policy of the, the APIs, we see that um, not all organizations actually have an API security solution. So the problem is not really solved. And the ones that have, uh, it's also divided how um, they test it. So um, if we ask in which stage the API is actually tested for security, so it's not like one answer many uh, use tools in the development phase many in other stages and as we saw many are not testing the api for security at all uh, regarding solutions that we saw that burp is very popular 
And I assume that Burp is being used by security people, not developers of desktop, because Burp, Burp is a security tool. It's aimed for security personas. Um, many do not use any tool. We saw uh, external pen test service, so many uh, companies paying to other organizations, uh, pen test organizations or uh, services to, to test their API for security. Uh, and Zap is also a popular tool. And one of the things that need to be emphasized that um, APIs are like regular development. We all we we develop APIs all all the all the way all the time. You know, it's like a co code that is being changed behind the API. So it's not like one pen test in in a single period will be enough in order to uh, cover the, the rapid changes that we have today in API. So we need uh, basically to to test our API for security constantly. Um, regarding responsibility, we saw here jungle. We saw here people that saying that in the organization, they think that the ABI developers are, are the, in charge and testers and security engineers. Basically, there is no uh, real owner uh, for the ABI security. And also regarding the opinion, more things that it should come left. We see a trend that people think that API security should be part of the uh api developers and testers basically should go uh left so this is about uh, uh the survey let's go back to the presentation okay so regarding the the common uh categories for api security so for the ones that do not know OWASP, OWASP is a non-profit organization uh, basically, in um, in 2019, there was a definition of 10 categories for API security. By the way, in in those days, there is a release candidate for a revised version of the categories, but I will cover today uh, the official uh, version of what are the categories for API security, basically. So let me uh, quickly maybe uh, go over and uh, those categories. So let's start from one very important category for API security is the broken object level authorization. What it actually means, it's like when you are a user for the system, you can access basically data of, you know, that belongs to you. If I'm a user, I want, I want to see the bank details that belongs to me, but it's a very severe problem if, if I can access, you know, the bank details of my friend. So this is the, the kind of vulnerabilities that, it, that relates to this category. If I can access um, a, a resource ID or data or object ID that belongs to uh, another user, it's basically a very severe problem that relates to this uh, category. And the problem with, with such uh, vulnerabilities, it's very uh, difficult to detect them. It's not like with regular code scanning, you can capture such vulnerabilities. So it's a very severe vulnerability that relates to the business logic of the application. That's the business logic that I described earlier. Uh, there is the broken user authentication. So this is the family of the authentication problems that exist today. You know, there are APIs that should be authenticated, but they are not behind any authentication. There are APIs that use weak authentication. Uh, pro improper use of JSON web tokens. So all the authentication issues belongs to uh, this category, basically. Excessive data exposure. Um, thinking of, of a scenario that as an API, I expose data that I shouldn't expose it, like the entire scheme of a specific uh, entry that should be filtered. There are a lot of architectures that put the responsibility on the client side. The, oh, the client side will, will filter the unnecessary data. But if I bypass the client and have an direct access to the API, I can maybe access data that I shouldn't uh, be able to access. So uh, we need to make sure that we expose only the data that the API should expose. So this is part of the API first thinking. Um, lack of resources and, and rate limiting. Can you imagine of you know attack scenarios that can be uh, a triggered from such vulnerabilities? So if I'm an attacker, I can maybe if there is no limit of the API calls, I can maybe uh, do brute force 
uh, and penetrate your system or uh, maybe cause a denial of service by you know overloading uh, your system so we need to control the resources and the rate limiting of our apis the number of apis that being uh, generated in a in a period of time um, maybe the payload size should be controlled to to prevent such uh, such issues uh, broken function level authorization so there is the object that we need to defend in the first category but also the functionality uh, that might not be allowed for certain users. So if I'm an admin, I'm allowed to do uh, some stuff, but if I'm a regular user, I cannot do the admin stuff. So we need to make sure that uh, every uh, functionality, every API that contains certain functionality is actually with the right, the right authorization. So think about the website that if I can log in with admin, I can do some operations. But if, if the operations in the server are not behind uh, uh, the specific permission. So if I bypass uh, this and call directly to the API, I can access this functionality. So again, API first approach, we need to defend in the server side to manage the permissions. Uh, regarding mass assignment, so if I'm not defending the object that I um, actually uh, set values to, uh, I'd be able you know, to bypass may maybe the API and um, uh, maybe uh, um, make some noise to a certain object that should be uh, uh, defended. Uh, so we need to take care of, uh, about each assignment which is being done behind the APIs. Uh, security misconfiguration is all the configuration problems that relates to API. So not only problems in the code behind the API, it's also about the configuration. If I doing a wrong configuration around TLS, around you know, the file system which sits behind the API. So we need to make sure that all the environment are also safe. Uh, injection, we all familiar with injection uh, attacks. It's also relevant to APIs, uh, the ability to inject something into database, the SQL or no SQL types of injections. There are a lot of uh, uh, tests that should be done around this because it can uh, cause a very severe uh, impact to organization if we are not taking care of this category. Uh, improper asset management, also very popular um, breach that can be uh, caused by such category because we know that we are developing a lot of version for the API. So if we are not managing the version, it might be, you know, a very old version in, of the API that remained in production and can be accessed by you know a malicious user and access the database so we are doing everything to defend the new apis but there is you know some old apis that is out there like uh you know shadow api or something that shouldn't be there uh, but not only you know all the apis also new APIs that are being in development and by mistakenly we uh, publish the state the staging api that is not ready yet so we need to make sure that the right api is, is in place uh, and the last one is insufficient uh, logging and monitoring, which is also a very important uh, aspect that if something occurred, we need to know about it and we need to know about it fast. So we, we need to log every uh, failure part of the code. We need to see that if there is an attack, we know about it and can mitigate it soon. Uh, so it's very important uh, report to SIM um, dashboard and everything to do everything also around uh the management of the api not only defending the api uh, themselves so those are the most important categories uh that uh was decided to put in front and this is like it became the de facto standard uh, for api security okay so um let's move on to the other side so if uh, we agree that api security should be handled what is the problem today to uh, handle the handle api security by the people in the organization so we have two sides we have the developers developers today basically they hate security there, there is no nice uh, way to look at it so developers uh, have, they have their own concerns they need to deliver code they need to deliver it fast security is not the main concern of the developer they see security as a silo it's like a gatekeeper that saying to them uh something is wrong all the time you know so it's not something they uh, usually like 
Um, they think that security does not have the business context. We know the familiar security tools is like something which is completely stylo from the business. It's like a separated process. Uh, so, and, and they don't uh, put their belief in it. And there is the other side of it. The security people are not security experts and we cannot expect uh, from developers to think about security all the day. It's not their expertise. Um, and the current security tools are basically time consuming. You need to be an expert in order to uh, execute them. They are, the, the process is very long. It takes a lot to configure them, to run them. It's taking a lot of time, basically. Um, and they are also complicated in inaccurate. We know about the post positive that security tool give me some indication, and we, we, we know a lot of static tools that produce, you know, hundreds of uh, of uh, false alarms. So it's not something that uh, perceived as accurate. Also, so this is the developer side. But what about sorry? What about the the, the security side? Security owner. So they have basically a, a complete war against the security in the organization. There are few. In many times we saw there is maybe one or two security people and you know one thousand of developers and testers. So there are few versus many. Uh, their objective is to make the organization to be more secure, to, to pass the compliance. They are not focused on the delivery. Yeah, they are focused on delivery of secure software. Uh, they don't have visibility of the development, especially for APIs. We see that many security people tell us we don't know what are the APIs that are being developed. We don't know who are the developers that are in charge in the APIs. It's more, you know, difficult than code. It's not like it's very visible for the security people what is going inside the production, what is going to inside the system. So there is a challenge to control it. Um, they really don't understand perfectly the application development. It's not their focus, uh, so they are not involved in the development process. It's another problem of the security people uh, to be uh, aligned with the developers. And they like the authority, so they are not like the security organization is the strongest organization inside the company. Uh, they need to make the software more secure, but they don't necessarily have the authority or the ability uh, to control the process. So we really have a, a big challenge here in order you know, to produce something that the organization can adopt and make the software development more secure, especially in API development. Okay, and, and then uh, there is Pint. Pint is basically, uh, as I said, a cyber security company in Israel, uh, very young but yet successful. And we took this big challenge of API security and we wanted to shift it left. So what we actually did, we automate the API security uh, to be fit to developers, to testers, to be able to run it as part of their uh, existing process. We actually created an autopilot that seamlessly integrates into their popular environment like Postman that we discussed previously and be able to run you know, with one click, basically, uh, API security and get the full visibility of the problems that they have uh, in the code. This is from the developer side. From the security side, uh, uh, we actually um, trying to visualize all the security tests from the to prod, all the APIs, all the developers, to allow them to control the process. So this is basically uh, Pint. And our security sequence was basically uh, is instead an autopilot that actually thinks like a hacker. We automated all the attacker mind inside the tool. So the developers should not, you know, be security expert and think about all the scenarios. We basically implemented all the scenarios very dynamically, and I will discuss the technology. How we do it, how we understand the business logic and create the right tests for each API, each environment. So basically, we are analyzing all the functional tests that exist today as part of the development process. You know, when you are an API developer, you develop functional tests for your API. So we actually take those functional tests, run them versus the target, learn all the anatomy of behind the API. So we understand from the functional test what is happening in your API, what APIs are, you know, set of requests and responses. We analyze all 
Uh, and basically, after we get the complete picture, we are able to do dynamic tests, very focused dynamic tests that identify all those API security issues. And we do it with a few minutes, you get the full picture, I will show you. Uh, the benefits for the developer, it's like a self-serve self solution. And, you know, it's like friction as a body. You don't need to, to do your thing in a security dedicated tool. You just continue from your existing uh, environment. We integrate the solution into existing uh, the platforms. And uh, Postman is just an example. Um, by our engine, we are able to understand the context of the application. We are allowing, allowing the developer dev to run and uh, find also from the CI CD pipeline. So it's covered all the way from, the, from uh, development to production. Uh, the coverage is for the OS.10 and more. Um, and the results are basically available in a few minutes. So, you know, developers do not need to uh, allocate more than a few minutes in order to have uh, the API uh, security um, from the first moment. The security owner, uh, this is part, basically the developer side is basically part of our community free version. So you can, you know, it's, it's like, you know, a self-serve solution. You can download and run it yourself. Even if you are not developers, everyone can run it in a few minutes and uh, test API for security. And the other side of it is the security owner. And this is part of the, also our um, enterprise version that we are building today with design partners. Uh, to be able to collect all the information for all the, the dots, all the points that actually run our tool and basically provide cross-company APIs and owners visibility and uh, testing coverage for the functional test, for the security test, uh, coverage from uh, dev fraud, uh, dashboards, uh, enforcement of policy uh, rules, and basically also compliance uh, readiness. So this is fine. And um, maybe let me uh, show you a show demo about Pint. Uh, before, I would like to say, like, if you have any questions, like, uh, you can you can write it in Q and A below, and we uh, we can ask to offer. Uh, by the way, offer like without being security engineer, like doing this kind of te tests are amazed me. Like, really, uh, I appreciate a lot uh, as a cybersecurity engineer. I would like to say that I don't need even this kind of ex experience and uh, this kind of things. It's 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 quite shocked me actually. I will be uh, soon without no job, right? Yeah. So th that's basically <laughs> our purpose, you know, you to give uh, access for security not only to security personas. We know security personas are very busy. They don't need to be the people that actually runs the test. They need to control the, the process not to execute the process because there are exactly. a lot of people exactly. in yeah, the organization like that owns the code you know we don't need you know to run the test for them uh so uh let me jump to the demo and then yeah, maybe yeah. i will, uh, we will go over to you, the you are doing great uh, just go on sorry for interim so um before the question let's move to a short uh, demo about find uh so what you see here basically is the integration to postman this is postman this is not pine but we downloaded already a collection called pine pine is basically this engine that runs the autopilot that runs the security test and basically already automated here uh, a parameter which if we look here we see there are a few parameters that are being needed by pine one is the api key of postman this is for the integration we, we are doing it automatically via wizard that we give you. And the other important parameter is the collection. The collection is basically a pointer or uh, an indication for which functional tests we want to consider in this security test. So in this case, we provided some vulnerable app called GOAT. And the GOAT has a test collection. And we actually run this uh, security test versus this vulnerable app called Goat. What I'm doing here is uh, I will start to run. There is one prerequisite before uh, running Pint. It's doing, you should do it only once. It's basically uh, to run a Docker. This is Pine Docker. It's only one command line and already run it. And the server is up and running. So it's only one command line in order to run Pint engine. 
And this is do all the smart job of automating the security uh, test, basically. So let's start by running Pine. And what you will start to see here is basically uh, uh, automating the, the security test. Um, and let me maybe tell you what is what is being done around the scene. So um, what we are doing here is basically we run the functional test. In this case, the parameter is for GOAT. This is the vulnerable app that we are using. And basically we are learning all the APIs that are around this test, all the parameters that are sitting in the APIs, we analyze all the requests and responses, basically. And after this analysis phase, we are able to basically shoot all the security tests, covering all those categories that I uh, mentioned. You saw it's already finished. Yeah, it's in this case, only a few second, seconds. In, in, in other cases, it can take maybe a few minutes, and that's all. And after the test is uh, being performed, basically all you need to do is to go there, go to here, click on uh, send on uh, show report. Under the visualize tab, all, all, all is done in inside Postman. You don't need to go anywhere. Uh, you see a report. This is inside Postman. And in this report, you see uh, um, a lot of findings. There are errors, warnings. This is the summary, by the way. How many endpoints was uh, were participating in the game, how many requests was part of the of the game. Uh, so in this case, the endpoints are login, account, transaction, we analyze all by ourselves. And we uh, provide you the errors. In this case, this is the typical uh, BOLA, it's the first category, the business logic uh, category. You see here user data leakage to other users. You don't need to imagine what is the impact of such thing that uh, you, one user gets data of another user. It's, in certain cases, it can destroy an organization. Uh, this is an, a typical authorization issue for a JSON web token. And we can, you can you know, pass all the problems. Uh, we tell you what we found. We tell you how to fix it. We will re uh, add later also uh, the Jira ticketing and also the uh, way to reproduce this problem is coming very soon. And the good news, all this is part of the free community version. You can, you know, after uh, this webinar, you can try it yourself and get it in your own uh, test collection. You see 21 uh, tests that were passed in this case. So you can also see not only the failure test, but also what was already uh, passed as part of your uh, tests. And um, have some visibility of your functional test, how many, uh, how much time the test is uh, taken, so some performance details. Uh, PII scene, in this case, we saw that there was some exposure of PII, which is a bad practice. So this is the current report. And let me show you another thing. So it's not only that Pint is running versus Postman collection. Let's say that you have a Python script with your API test, and you wish to run Pint versus your Python test. So it's not necessarily you need to work uh, with Postman. You can also run Pine as part of your uh, uh, other uh, platform. In this case, you see it's a simple command line. Actually, I put here the GOAT functional test, but this time this GOAT functional test is not a Postman collection. It's a Python test. And the same will, will happen also from the CLI and basically, um, this is done automatically. We are pulling the latest Docker find, and we will start running the test soon. And this is basically doing the same as we saw in Postman. We are running automatically all the security tests. So you can uh, use it also for your PyTest. We also support RestAssured for the ones that are using uh, RestAssured as part of their API testing automation. Um, and basically, you see the report is being opened in your browser the same as we saw in uh, in Postman. So that's the magic happening also with other environments, not only uh, Postman. This is basically can be taken as is into the CI CD. So it's one command line, you configure it and it can run automatically in your CI CD. If you change your API, change the code behind the API, add something to your API, everything can be run automatically inside the CI CD. You don't need to worry 
about API security uh, in your development process if you use it. So this is the idea. Um, before jumping to question, maybe I will take you to a very short walkthrough in Pint website. Uh, so this is Pint website, basically. We have here, you know, uh, in one button, you can enter and sign up and actually run Pint as, as so. You have your video, what are the steps that needed to be done in order to run uh, uh, to run Pine. And there are other exciting uh, um, things here. There is the badges program that we, in order to encourage people, you know, to use API security as part of their day-to-day -day job, uh, we are offering some uh, digital badges that you can put in LinkedIn, you know, as part of your profile. You are now a security champion or uh, early adopter of Pine or ambassador. So there are rules around each uh, badge. Uh, very simple for the early adopter. You just need basically to run Pine versus your own collection, and you can send the mail and get an early adopter badge. The champion, uh, the, the ambassador badge. Let's go to the ambassador badge. Is basically, you know, if you recommend Pine to three of your friends that also become early adopters of Pine, uh, you get the ambassador badge. And the champion badge is basically if you find a vulnerability in one open source that involves API. A real vulnerability in the wild in the world you basically help to clean the world from vulnerabilities and you get a champion uh, badge of pine it's a very important uh, aspect you know to clear the world uh, from api vulnerabilities there are a lot of third, third parties open sources out there and we need to make sure that the world is more secure uh, the community i encourage you to to join it it's basically a slack uh, channel that you can connect to us and there are a lot of you know support people there that can support you and we are announcing uh, new features new stuff so it's free and you're welcome to to join it and regarding the enterprise version of pint um whom, the ones that are interested we are collecting a lot of design partners today to become a uh, part of our journey uh, we offer very special prices to those design uh, partners and help them to clean uh, their or to to engage with us to in order to bring to a more uh, secure uh, posture for APIs. So you know, feel free to approach me. I will put my um, uh, details also in the chat so you can you know approach me directly uh, if you wish. So that's about uh, Pine. So uh, I'll be happy also, you know, to jump to the question and answers. Um, we are on all can read the questions. We have five different questions for now. Um, I can mm -hmm. ask one of these questions. Uh, does the number okay. of the API test cases uh, affect? Test performance uh, of the test results of Pint. That's the question yes. from the so, so it's a good, a very, a very good question. So yes, basically, um, uh, the better the, the functional test, uh, it will help Pint in order to produce more deep security tests. Uh, we do uh, know how to run either, even if you do a very basic test, but we recommend you know to do a comprehensive functional tests in order to improve. Uh, the performance of Pint. I will also say that we are giving you the indication if something in miss is missing. For example, for the business logic test, we need to, you to define at least two users uh, in your system. So if in your functional test you have only one user, we say to you, hey, please add another user, and then we can, you know, rerun and, and get a better and cool results. So okay, thanks. For the answer, uh, another one is the ZOP is capable of scanning APIs. Uh, how Pint is different? Oh, can you repeat? Just a second. Uh, ZOP, OSP ZOP is a capable of scanning APIs. How Pint is different? So, so OS ZOP basically is a tool that it's more um aim for the security persona you need to do a lot of configurations in order to start activating it it's not like you saw in one click you can you know activate and and get the security results a lot of configuration that you need to be aware of and do and also zap is not focused on, on api zap is the more generic tool that actually help you to 
it's very good tool, yeah, to actually help you with, with your security posture, with your general security posture. But the API problems uh, require more dedicated tools. So we recommend to use that, but also in order to have uh, good coverage for the API, also to use, uh, to use Spine. And again, if you wish to run, it's as part of the development process. I think it's a good practice to use Spine because it's very simple. You know, developers will not uh, spend a lot of time running security tools. We need to remember that. Uh, thank you. And how have you managed the authenticated scans? Okay, so basically because we are relying on the functional tests, okay, so we, we are able also to figure out the authentication. So we are actually leveraging the functional test. So if your functional test is testing the authentication part, we are able to leverage it and also, you know, take care of the security and say to you, in this case, you don't have authentication. In the case you have authentication, we use it and say if you have other problems behind the authentication. Um, thank you. Uh, another question is, um, does Pint test for business logic? Yeah, of course. So, so our main focus, you know, if uh, um, there is uh, cases that need to be tested for business logic, of course, we are approaching them. This is our purpose, you know, to cover the uh, main categories of API security. So, of course, business logic is one of the main concerns that we approach in our tool. Thank you. Um, another question from Fabian. Um, with the report in front of you, uh, who is the right person uh, in the organization to read it? Um, he's a QA engineer. I know how to make a good collection inside Postman. I know how to run the collection and connect it to Pine, but I don't know uh, how to interpret result, results yeah, in the so report. Yep. It's a very good question. Uh, we aim the report, you know, for the for the people that actually develop the API, again, the developer is the one that needs to solve eventually uh, the problems that we found. We basically found, you know, bugs, like security is like other bugs. Are, they are maybe more difficult to, to figure out, but we want to simplify, you know, the security issues and give the developer the opportunity to fix the issues that we found. So we explain exactly what we did, what, what needed to be done in order to reproduce the issue. And this can be handed over to the developer that will will solve the, the bug. We will also help the QA, but giving uh, the option to reproduce a curl script that the QA also will be able to reproduce manually uh, the problem. So we you won't rely only on the fine script. You can also take the curl script and reproduce uh, the bug yourself. Uh, so if it answers your question. Um, a question from Talha, uh, is already there any integration with SOC tools or is there any central dashboard which gets all reports scanned by API tester or developer and which shows all of the reports? So basically in the, in the community version, in the current community version, uh, we are doing basic integration that aims to the developer, to the tester, to the end user in order to activate find from his table and get all the results in a few minutes, as you saw. Uh, in the enterprise version, we are adding more features which relates to collaboration for managing APIs uh, in the team, in the security department that there is a security owner after all that needs to see all the, all the stuff. Other integrations which are, you know, not straightforward maybe also uh, are planned to be part of the enterprise version. And, you know, I'll be glad, you know, to hear your requirements. As said, you know, you can uh, feel free to uh, connect to the Slack community and shoot me with requirements and we will consider if we can add them to the community. The community version will be free forever. The security will grow in the community version. So as a single user, you will be able to get API security free forever. Thank you. Uh, we have three more questions and uh... Uh, which one? Uh, one of these uh, I also wanted to ask. Is there any negative false risk for past cases of Pint? Uh, this question from Ramazan. And I will also want to ask that um, how do you manage the false uh, positive uh, results? Okay, so it's a good question. 
what we do, which puts us in a better position, you know, there is no 100% security, uh, and I, I will lie to you if I, I will say it is 100%, but Pint is, uh, is uh, using a technology that is uh, less uh, exposed for, to false positive. And this is because we analyze the traffic. We analyze the traffic from your functional tests, and we basically uh, get a good knowledge of what are the uh, roles of your API, what are the roles of the parameters. So we produce a lot of findings versus other tools and let false positive versus other tools because most of the other tools are using fast techniques. They are, you know, using uh, um, some heuristic and shoot with a lot of uh, uh, attacks and they are uh, very um, exposed to false positive in, in one hand and they are not, basically, if they are, they are not familiar with the application, they are not learning the anatomy of the application, they cannot find all the vulnerabilities that are part of the OS.NET. Thank you. Um, can you elaborate more in integration with CI, CD? Of course. So. We have the pint command, which is basically the command line you saw that actually be able to connect to any API testing script. It can be Postman collection. We have Newman uh, uh, command line support. Also, Newman is the command line version of uh, Postman. We also support other uh, environments like uh, Rest Assured, support Python. So basically, the, uh, the command line can wrap any uh, test any functional test and turn it into a security test as you saw in Postman. And you can take this command line simply and insert it to your CI CD. And there are explanation in our site. There is a doc section in our website that actually tells you how to take this command line and actually put it in your CI CD. We support all the popular CI CD options like, you know, GitHub Action, Jenkins, uh, Super, so. CI, so you're Thank welcome you. to try it. Mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, question from Victor. Uh, with the recent 3CX VoIP supply chain attack, would your product have identified the Trojanized uh, DLL? And this DLL had code that was signed off by Apple, meaning their tools didn't identify the IOC. This particular compromise used encryption to obf obfuscate as well. Okay, if I understand correctly, um, this this vulnerability is more, you know, like a, a third party vulnerability that can be uh, found by a static scan, but let me check it specifically and I can, you know, revert back with this question. So feel free to approach me and I will check and get back to you offline with this. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answers and uh, thanks. Uh, I'll put it maybe in the chat uh, my data so you can you know approach me even uh, directly if you want with some questions. So this is my LinkedIn profile. I will put it. So feel free you know to shoot me with a uh, question on us. Okay. Um, Gwen, are you there? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Opa, for uh, this event, and thank you very much for attendance. Uh, it was a really great event, and I learned too much things. And really, when I saw your products personally, really I affected. And when I see demo um, as a lively, I'm really I like it. Thank you very much for everything. Yeah, you too. Thank you for having me. Opa, also. Uh... Really, you you spend your time with us, and also I would like to say thank you for Unixec Okan. Thank you very much for your all efforts and Ahmed and Omur. Like all of you guys, make this possible. Uh, also, Secure Debug is a uh, host of this webinar. Uh, thank you for Secure Debug and for all attendees. Thank you for your time and consideration. We will we will upload this uh, webinar on the YouTube channel, so you can also find. This webinar from Security Box YouTube channel. Uh, you you can also watch it there again. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.